guys. Welcome back to a case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about era de root equilibrium with uncertainty in an infinite period problem. Today we're going to be talking about the first order conditions based on the setup to the problem that we talked about last time. So let's get into it. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. From that last video, here's the utility maximization problem we're trying to solve for Bill and Dave. Now the problem is two infinite sums. The outside infinite sum is 4t equals 0 to infinity, and the inner sum is from s equals 1 to n. In our problem, we just have two states of nature so it'd really be one from two. We have our normal beta t or a time discounting the probability of each event history and the utility of the consumption for each person in each event history. And then we have our infinite budget constraint, all of which we talked about last time. Let's go on to talk about our plan of action. Our plan of action is going to have three steps. First, we are going to take what are called representative first order conditions. So we'll take a first order condition for CIT of an event history ST. And then we are going to take a first order condition for time zero for a given person i for an event history where the first period or t equals zero whether is one or some. Then what we are going to do is we're going to do something called normalization. I'll explain what that means in a second. After we've normalized, we'll combine those first order conditions. And then we're going to interpret the first order conditions and talk about what they mean rather than go ahead and go all the way through and solve for the actual level of consumption. The reason we're going to do this is because often in these problems, as they get more complicated, we're not so much interested in the answer. We're more interested in what the first order conditions mean and what the answer sort of looks like. And that's called characterizing the solution rather than solving. So here are our representative first order conditions. I'm just following the standard steps to take a first order condition of that infinite sum. So again, it's a first order condition for a given person in a given time period for a given event history. We've got our lambdas. Notice we only have one budget constraint. So this is not lambda t or lambda t of a superscript t. It's just one lambda. So now we have a couple of variables and we're going to normalize. And what I mean by normalize is we're going to say, well, since all these prices are ratios, let's just set one of these prices equal to one and and then the rest of the prices can be related to that normalized price. So let's just normalize the price of period zero of the event history zero when the period and time zero is sunny. So I'll just say P zero of S zero equals one. I'm just gonna make that a little easier to read, say P zero of one, and that's just gonna be equal to one, and that's our normalization. Now, very similarly to how we've solved other era de Brut equilibriums, we're just gonna combine our FOCs and see what happens. So again, this is really a price ratio, but we've normalized the P zero of one to be one, so this just sort of drops out. It's not really there. Just combine those first order conditions. Notice that this holds for Bill and Dave. If I know that Bill's Euler equation is equal to this guy. That means that Dave's Euler equation is also equal to that same price T of event history S superscript T. So I can set them equal to each other and solve. And notice that what that is going to be is now we have a ratio of marginal utilities between Bill and Dave and time period T for an event history S superscript T compared to the marginal utility of that same person in time zero where the weather in time zero is sunny. So we can go through a bunch of steps to show that if we have a relatively well-behaved utility function, that we're going to get that every person in every event history is going to consume some fixed ratio theta i of the aggregate endowment in that given state. I'm not going to show that in this video. If that would be helpful to see, leave a comment below and I will make a subsequent video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. And using that result that we just saw, we can plug that back in for the price. And instead of a CT of ST here, we're just going to get that theta to I aggregate endowment of a state. A couple things I want us to look at at this price. Notice that we've got a ratio of probabilities between the probability today of a given event history and the probability or that 50% chance that in time zero it's sunny. Notice that we've got marginal utilities, a ratio of marginal utility here. And notice that we've got our time discounting value beta to the T here. I want to talk about the key takeaways in terms of price. We know from the result above that we're going to have perfect consumption smoothing across state and time. You can also see that because again, we're consuming a fixed proportion of the aggregate endowment in any given period in any given event history. But let's talk about the prices. So here are some key takeaways that we found over the course of this video. We talked about per consumption smoothing. There's no aggregate risk, right? There's two coconuts in every period. It's just whether or not Bill or Dave has those two coconuts. And we saw that they're consuming the constant share of aggregate endowment. For prices, because of that equation, notice a couple things. Prices will go down if the period is further ahead in the future because our beta t will discount the price even further. If the probability of an event history is lower, the price will be lower. And 
and if aggregate endowment fluctuate, if it goes up and down across periods or across event histories. Notice that as the aggregate endowment goes up, the margin of utility goes down because margin of utility is diminishing, which means that if we have a lot of aggregate endowment in a given period in a given event history, the price for those coconuts in that period in that event history should be lower than if we had a period in event history in which we had less coconuts or less endowment. So hopefully this makes a little more sense in terms of the first order conditions and characterizing the solution for an air debris equilibrium. If this was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggle.